Now, when I was making these videos, I didn't realize I actually kind of missed a very special case here of um, carboxylic acid reactions. And these are self-condensation reactions. So if you look on the board behind me, you see that I've got this dicarboxylic acid. And specifically, I have the dicarboxylic acid sitting right next to each other. So is this how the compound exists? Well, in the presence of water, yes, this is how the compound exists. But why do I say in the presence of water? Well, think about it. OH, what did we talk about when we talk about carboxylic acid derivatives or things reacting with carboxylic acids? We have a nucleophile with a lone pair and a hydrogen attached to it. Well, this is what our oxygen is here. Our oxygen has lone pairs and has a hydrogen attached to it. So what can happen is that these lone pairs will attack this oxygen and we end up breaking off the OH and this deprotonates the hydrogen. And what we end up generating here is a five-membered reading. And this reaction is reversible. So adjacent carboxylic acid, rea car carboxylic acid groups can react with each other, particularly if we form five and six membered rings. And these rings come about basically through dehydration of the two carboxylic acid groups to give us the acetic anhydride groups. Now this is reversible. So if we were to add a whole bunch of water to this, this would be the predominant compound. But if we were to run this under anhydrous conditions, so we threw something here like calcium hydride, that would eliminate the water we would ultimately produce the acetic anhydride and we would have this available for any type of reactions we want to run. So keep this in mind, if you're running reactions and you want both carboxylic acid, you're going to have to end up running this on in aqueous conditions, otherwise your predominant product here, because it can self-dehydrate with itself, is the acetic anhydride.